Greetings hockey fans. Today we're going to take a look at the revisions I have made for the tabletop game Big Bep Hockey. Now some of the the issues I had with this game is that um, it takes a long, t well by my standards it takes a long time to play at 90 minutes and the um, the game is driven by fast action cards, of which there's a hundred, and fast results cards. And one period consists of a hundred fast action cards. You have to flip all a hundred. Which means that each play sequence takes 12 seconds. And what happens is a lot of the results are loose pucks and a lot of the shots are shot C. Now if you take a look at the player card um, there's three types of shots shot A, B, and C. A is a good quality shot, B is you know, medium, and C doesn't have much chance to score. And there are a lot of C shots uh, results that come up on the uh, action deck and the fast results deck and when you take an A shot there's a chance for a rebound but when you take a B or a C shot it's a loose puck instead so I was getting a lot of loose puck results and the game just felt like it was taking too long with with, with, with too many loose pucks and it, it just wasn't very exciting so what I have done is I have, um, after some experimenting, I have shortened the action deck to 30 action cards, which means each play sequence is now 40 seconds, similar to Stratomatic Hockey, where you, one period is th uh, 30 action cards. And uh, in in the in the regular game. Uh, each each time you flip an action card, that you 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 mark off another uh, time sequence in, until you use all 100. Uh, the way I check off a time sequence now is only if I'm reading an action result. I'll just give you a look at what these cards look like. Only when I'm reading an action result off the fast action deck do I mark off a time sequence. If I'm reading a rebound, a loose puck. Um, no, no time sequence is marked off, and the power play and the penalty kill are, are separate actions. Now, on the fast uh, result card, uh, there's never anything where I where I mark off a time sequence. Uh, the face off, assist, one to one hundred random number, and a possible penalty. So uh, let's go back to the player cards, give you a little bit more of an idea of, of what they look like. As I said, it's got the three shot types. It's got, uh, and these are all 1 to 100 numbers, and it's got the power play shot and a penalty kill, a shorthanded shot. So you can see some players have, have, have better numbers than others. Um, uh, this is a 1973-74 uh, season, Seals and Atlanta Flames. So you can see Joey Johnson has pretty good power play numbers and penalty kill numbers. And uh, so each player is rated at offense. Uh, SA is shot adjustment, I'll explain that. Intimidation and defense. Now typically for most players who are regulars, the, uh, the offense rating is going to range from like 4 to 7 and the same with the d defense rating. The, the only time you find someone who's perhaps lower than that is if it's a marginal player who only played a few games. And what could make the offense or defense rating go, go higher is if you are playing in a uh, pressure offense or in a, um, a shutdown uh, defense. And also the players are rated for assist, injury, face-off, uh, they, this is called a special rating. It could go from uh, A to E and a penalty rating. Now, let's see. 
So when reading from the uh, action deck, I have also changed some of the action deck readings. Anytime a reading of a shot C comes up, it's changed to a shot B. In my revised version, there are no shot C uh, readings all, all for the player cards. Okay, so th those have been completely eliminated. So in this case, this action card reading would be a shot on goal A or B. Let's see, and uh, over here, on a rebound, that's a shot on goal B. This would stay shot on goal A. That, that's unchanged. And again, uh, uh, here's a shot on goal B. That would remain the same. But anytime it's a C shot, that is changed to uh, shot on goal B. Uh, take a look at some more. Here, yeah, this one, uh, reading of B or C, that becomes changed to A or B. And so what you're doing in this game is uh, the play. Uh, you, you're matching up the two opponents. Sometimes their offense rating, sometimes their defense rating, sometimes their intimidation ratings. So for the visiting team, I have the the wingers in the and the, the forwards in the middle, and the defensemen on the outside. For the home team. I have the defensemen uh, on both sides of the center and the wingers on the outside. This way, when there is a matchup, the center is matched up against the center, but here the right wing is matched up against the left defenseman. So it's uh, for the wingers, they're always matched up against the defenseman. So in, in, let's see, in the case of this card, um, let's see if we have one with a matchup. Yeah, uh, the puck goes to the right wing, and if uh, you're checking his offense rating, if it's a one, now most times you don't even have to look at the card because, like I said, the offense rating it's usually between four and seven. So, if it is an off, if he does meet the the criteria, it's a shot on goal A. Uh, if he did not meet the criteria of the uh, offense rating, it would be a shot on goal B. So in this case, well, let's give it to a, a better rater than uh, a better player than Lou Morrison. So uh, Kurt Bennett would have a shot on goal A. His chances would be one to eighteen, and with a shot on goal A, you check his opponent's shot adjustment rating, and you add three in, in the case of Walt McKechnie. So his 1 to 18 now becomes 1 to 21. Pick a random, uh, pick a uh, fast result card. The random number is not between 1 and 21. So it's a save by the opposing goalie, and you're going to check for a rebound because it was a shot A. If it was a shot on goal that was not in his shot range, for shot B, you would check loose puck instead. So a shot on goal A is always checking a rebound. Shot on goal B is always checking a loose puck. So doing it this way has cut down on, on a lot of the, the loose puck readings that was really um, bogging the game down for me. Now in the event that the, let's see if one comes up, if the random number had been between 1 and 23, that's a, uh, a, a higher percentage a shot that has a chance to score so you check the opposing goalie and what I like about the goalie cards is they have a range for when they're playing on the road or on ho at home and they also have a clutch range which comes up sometimes on the action cards so in the case of Malash he's the home team so you're gonna draw another um, fast result card and if the random number is between 1 and 45 Malash makes the save if it's outside of that range, it's going to be a goal for Bennett, and it's outside of the uh, outside of the range, so that would be a goal for for Kurt Bennett. Now, how, let's see how the uh, how the rebound comes into play. Now we'll go back, and um, as we said, we had a shot on goal A, one to twenty-one. The result was outside, so that's an automatic save by Malash. Now you're going to check his rebound rating, and it's going to be between. Uh, one is like the worst and nine is the best. So you're going to um, you're going to pick an fast action card. Now remember 
we're only going to mark over time if you're reading from the action. So here is a result that's still within the same time sequence because we're looking at a rebound. <coughs> so if the rebound uh, on the card is 1 to 2, Malash's uh, team is going to grab the rebound and it'll go to the left defenseman. If it's outside of 1 to 2, which in this case it is, it's a 9, it's going to be a shot on goal uh, a rebound shot on goal B, remember we're not reading the C offense, for, uh, for the opponent. And, um, uh, yeah, all right, so it would be a, a, a shot on goal for the, uh, for the opposing left defenseman, shot on goal B. So in this case, <laughs> for no price, he's, he's not a big score. In fact, he had zero goals in 62 games. So his chances are uh, of, of getting a, a scoring chance are uh, 1 out of 100. And let's just see what the next one would have been. Nope. So that's just going to be, it's not in his scoring range, so it's going to be a, sh a shot on goal and a loose puck instead of a rebound. So you're going to pick another action card, you're not going to mark off a time, and the loose puck is going to go to the visitor right wing. And I'm kind of refining uh, this as I go along. I found that was the shots on goal were running a little bit too high. So uh, what I'm doing is, uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but every time there's a shot on goal A, whether it's a scoring chance or a rebound, I mark off a shot on goal for that team. If it's a shot on goal B, and it is not within the player's shot on goal B range, uh, I only count it as a shot on goal if the random number was between 1 and 50. If it was 51 to 100, I don't. I mark that as a wide shot, no shot on goal. And either way, you're checking a loose puck after a shot on goal B. So that is getting the shots on goal a little bit closer to realistic numbers. At some point, I, I might even lower it a little, a little bit more and might make it 1 to 40 instead of 1 to 50. Uh, I'm just tinkering with these uh, adjustments as I go along. And one thing I'm really not um, happy with is how the power play is working out because under this revision, a power play would only last three action cards, and I'm thinking of possibly making it six action cards. Uh, so let's see what, uh, what else would come up. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, one more thing is I don't seem to be getting too many penalties, so anytime pe uh, a penalty chance will come up in the uh, in the action section so and you come over here on the fast results deck and you read the uh, the the penalty section now some of the penalties are going to be you're checking an individual player some of the penalty results are going to be you're checking the team the team penalty rating so here it's the home team penalty rating if it's four or higher. Now in the case of the SEALs, there are only a three, so that that result would yield no penalty. If it happened to be on Atlanta, it would be a, a penalty on, on Atlanta. And in that case, it would be the highest rated, uh, the, the player with the highest penalty rating, two minutes of slashing. And what I've been doing lately is just ignoring the readings that say home team, and instead taking it as a possible penalty on the player in, uh, opposite the player with the puck. Um, but still still the, the penalties are, are seem to be running low. And there's also a penalty thing which comes up sometime if the player ha uh, his penalty rating is in black, uh, a black background. Uh, you're going to check for the tough guy chart, a possible fight. Uh, but for the Seals, uh, that season, this season, 73-74, they were like last in the league in penalty minutes, so they don't have anyone with that um, with that rating, uh, at least not on the regulars that I've been using so far. Let's see, Barry Cummins might have it, because I remember he got in a pretty ugly brawl with the Flyers that year, and he, he smacked uh, Bobby Clark in the face with the stick, and Clark was on the ice on his knees, and... The flyer bench came out and they pretty much mauled Barry Cummins. Well, here's Barry Cummins, and he's only rated a penalty 10. He does not have the tough guy rating. Okay, 
so we cleared that up. Uh, let's see what else. Um, there is also a rare play chart, uh, but there's only, I believe, uh, maybe two, but I believe there's only one action card reading in the entire 100 card deck in which you're checking for the rare play chart. I, I really don't like it. Um, I may revise it to get more, because the game doesn't really have breakaways unless they come off the rare play chart. So I might make my own version with more breakaways and uh, some other changes to it and I might even make this reading of offside make that also go to the uh, rare play chart just so we so we get a, f a few more breakaways I mean especially playing with the with the 70s there was more uh, more breakaways I think in, in the 70s than, than probably in, in modern hockey or even uh, even the 80s w would have a lot of breakaways too so that's something else I've been uh, been testing out and let's see, oh, as far as the, the face-offs, um, yeah, uh, with, with the power play, one other thing I've been experimenting on, on the power play, uh, it doesn't specifically say it in the instructions, I don't believe, but I've been increasing the power play team's uh, face-off ratings. So here's a guy who's uh, four, I'm, I'm going to make it a five. I might even increase it by two. And also, um, there was one other thing I was changing in regard to the uh, power play. Um, oh yeah, all right. So the the player offense uh, each offense rating also increasing by one because if you see on the power play, there are readings that come up where you have to be in offense eight. And as I said, the players are generally only their highest offense rating is seven. The the, the best even someone like. Um, you know, Phil Esposito, he scored, you know, 60 goals this year or 50 goals this season. He, he's a 7. And Joey Johnson scored 27 goals and he's a 7. So the ratings never go beyond 7. But there's readings on the, um, in the power play section where it goes up to 8. So I, I don't remember if it's said in the instructions, but I'm kind of assuming that you should be increasing the player's offense rating when they're on the power play. So I've been doing it by one. I, I may even increase it to two because uh, it seems like I, I, I don't get many uh, power play goals. I, I've played six games so far. I'm attempting to replay the Seals 73-74 uh, season. So I'm up to I'm up to game seven. Actually, um, I'm doing this while I'm in the middle of a game. It's uh, three to three after two periods between these two teams. So I've got one more period to go and I would play it live on the uh, on a camera, but it's too much to try to do it while holding the camera and picking cards, shuffling the lines out, and marking the score sheet. And also, as far as the lines, since there's 30 action cards, I've been doing it like Stratomatic, where I just put the uh, the forward line out for 10 action cards. Been playing three lines. Uh, the Seals actually have four lines, so I'll, I'll, I'll sub one, their fourth line in occasionally. And the, the, the defensive pairs I leave out there for uh, each defensive pair gets one shift of 15 action cards. But again, some teams use their fifth defenseman more, so I'll, I'll, I'll sub in a fifth defenseman here and there. But I'm really uh, keeping the game kind of simple and just seeing how the results work out with this revised version, whether it will be enough to get me to want to play the game more often and pick up a couple more seasons because... Uh, I tell you, Big Bep has more seasons available than any other hockey game. They've got all the WHA seasons. They've got a ton of minor league seasons. So, um, if I could get the game scaled down to my liking, I will play more and I will get more seasons. So, I probably had some more stuff to cover, but that's all I can think of for now. So, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next video.